I just want to just greet you in divine love, first of all. You know, you guys have been just truly amazing. And I want to thank tonight Sister Freeman for just giving me something to just open me up because I've been clogged up for a couple of days. So if I'm talking loud, just raise your hand. You know, give me a note because if I'm hitting a note, I don't even know how to hit a note. I don't really have a voice. <laughs> but you know the power of God is something else. Yeah. You, do you understand the power of God? Yeah. See, I understand the power of God. If I made it thus far, then why not let him do what he do? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not me. Don't, it's not me. Is that all right, y'all? Love you, love you, love you. I really love the I can say I love him. Oh, I love him. I really love Let's do that again. The Y'all know that was my preacher for uh, at least five, five, six years, and and I just love to hear him. I love to hear him sing. Man. Uh, Glory, hallelujah! I shall not be moved. Will I make him? Jehovah, I shall not be moved like a tree, a tree that's planted by the water. Yes, and you know that I shall. 
shall not be in move. Say that again. Glory, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Say, I shall not be moved. Anybody can say, I make a day. In Jehovah, yes, say, I shall not be moved. I'll be like a tree, a tree that's planted by the wall. You know that I shall. I'm waiting on my church to show up now. Here we go. One more time. Glory, hallelujah. Sing glory, hallelujah. Yes, sing. I shall not be moved. Lord, you know me. Take it in, Jehovah. You know that I shall not be be moved. I'll be like a tree, like a tree. Yeah, that's, that's planted by, by, by the water. water. Yeah, oh, said so you know that I, I shall not, not be moved. Be now can y'all really sing it like you mean it? Yeah, said so you know that I, I shall not By, by the wall, you may be seated. You know that I shall not, shall not be moved. You know that I shall not. Somebody ought to make the devil mad tonight. I shall not be moved. Tell the devil you tried to win the battle. Lord, you won't win the war Cause I won't, I can't be moved I'll be like a tree Yeah, that's planted by rivers of water Yeah, so I told the devil I I can't, I can't be moved Can we tell the devil one more time in here? Yeah! You know that I shall not I won't be moved. I shall not be moved. You ought to tell him for yourself tonight. Oh, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Just, just like a tree that's planted by the wall. That a few of your humble servants have gathered between these consecrated walls with our feet on this hallowed ground to give you glory, to give you honor, and to give you the praise. For we realize that it was you that woke us up this morning, and it was you that started us on our way. You gave us the mobility of our limbs and the ability to put one foot in front of the other. Father, before we ask you for anything, we want to come before you saying thank you. Thank you for being our bread when we were hungry, our water when we were thirsty. Father, you made a way out of no way. And we lift up holy hands tonight. In praise and adoration to you for all you have done. All that you are doing and all that you will do for us in the future. And Father, right now we come asking you to do for us as you have done in time past. 
And that is to answer the age-old question, is there any word from the Lord? Use me right now, dear God. Strip me of myself. Clothe me with your spirit. Give me preaching power tonight that I may be able to extract and even to extrapolate from your word divine those things that can be made applicable in the lives of the hearers. And Father, when it is your time to call and our time to answer, when we've sung our last song and prayed our last prayer, drank our last cup of sorrow and wound up our last ball of trouble, and this whole world can't afford us a home any longer when we must die because we cannot live. Give us a home, O oh God, in your heavenly kingdom where we can be forever blessed, where we can serve the Father and the Son throughout eternal ages. For it is in the powerful and the potent name of Jesus that we pray. Let every heart respond by saying, Amen. Come on, if you're willing and you're able tonight, will you give God praise in the house of the Lord? Come on, put your hands together and give God a mighty praise in his house. My grandmother told me, you don't ever come to somebody's house without saying thank you. So do you have a thank you on your spirit tonight where you can put your hands together? I know it might be unorthodox tonight, but can you put your hands together and give God a praise in his house tonight? Because he's mighty, he's a mighty good God. And we're thankful tonight that he's allowed us to come this far by faith, leaning on his everlasting arm. I'm not strong enough, I'm not intelligent enough, I'm not even holy enough to be where I am today. But it is by the grace and the mercy of God. Y'all don't know when to shout. I said it's by the grace and the mercy of God. I said it's by the grace and the mercy of God. Y'all must be holy on this side. I said it's by the grace and the mercy of God. Uh, if it was not for his grace and his mercy, I should be dead sleeping in some lonesome grave. But, but his grace and, okay, y'all, 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 y'all. I said his grace and his mercy. It don't take a lot for me to shout. I said his grace and his mercy allowed me to come this far, and I'm thankful to him tonight. And there ought to be a smile on every face in the house of the Lord. Uh, some of y'all looking too mad to be in church. I said, you ought to be a smile uh, on every... Y'all ought to be used to me by now. I said, there ought to be a smile. Uh, if you didn't bring your teeth tonight, so your gums. There ought to be a smile uh, on every face tonight uh, because we serve a mighty... A mighty good God. Uh, I am forever grateful to this church and to the leadership and to the ministerial team and to the uh, leadership team for this invitation. And I don't take it lightly uh, whenever I have the opportunity to stand for the people of God and to share with them uh, a word from the Lord. I never take it for granted. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart. Uh, that I'm thankful to the Figueroa Church for an overwhelming uh, embrace and overflow of love that you have demonstrated uh, to this, this preacher. And uh, I will take all of this back to Fort Worth and to share with them uh, that there is a church in Los Angeles uh, that loves the Lord and loves his word. Uh, I want you to, to love on uh, your ministers and to communicate to them good things uh, because no one knows the great burden of leading God's people. Uh, and so whenever you have an opportunity to do good, the Bible says do it. Uh, but especially those. Uh, am I in the church of Christ tonight? Uh, especially those who are in the household uh, of faith. How many of y'all love preachers? How many of y'all love preachers? I'm looking, I'm looking, uh, just notice who don't have a hand up. Just, just, uh, uh, praise the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, uh, I, I, I want to thank you uh, for your prayers. Uh, my son is still in the hospital and uh, he is in good spirit. 
uh, because children are uh, the picture of resilience. And so, uh, and so I, I, I look forward uh, to being with him and standing by his side tomorrow. Uh, so be in prayer for me as I preach to you tonight. Uh, but I do believe, nevertheless, uh, if I'm not there, I know who is there. Uh, because I serve a God who can be in Los Angeles and Dallas at the same time. Uh, and so we're thankful to him tonight. Thankful to those of you who communicated good things in this uh, love offering and love feast tonight. I'm appreciative to that, uh, to you. And Brother Hawkins uh, was talking about two offerings, one for me and one for my wife. Uh, but what he doesn't know that no matter what I bring home, uh, she going to take it anyway. Uh, so uh, I can try to say uh, this hell for you and this hell for me. Uh, but she going to say uh, this hell for both of us. <laughs> and so well, we're thankful to you tonight. Stand, if you will, uh, as we read the word of God and turn your Bibles to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, and I was in prayer all day asking God uh, what he wanted me to share with you as I make my exodus uh, from this great church. And this is the passage uh, or passages of scripture that he laid upon my heart, and I'm prayerful that it will be advantageous uh, to you tonight. John chapter 3, verse number 14. If you have it, say amen if you can. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. That everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever, somebody say whoever. Uh, that's black folk, that's white folks, that's, that's Hispanics, that's... That's, 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 that's the prostitutes, that's the drug dealers, that's single mothers, that's young girls who were pregnant at 15. Who, who, whoever. Uh, are y'all, am I in church tonight? Uh, believes in him uh, shall not perish but have eternal life. You may be seated in the presence uh, of God. <clears throat> As I spent time in prayer and meditation, uh, I have discovered uh, that it is possible to spend intimate time with Jesus in prayer, meditation, and even in revival and completely miss what God is trying to do. Let me say that again. It is possible that you spend intimate time in prayer, in meditation, and even in revival with Jesus and completely miss what he's trying to do. And, and I, don't know, I don't know how you feel about it tonight, but, but I came all the way from Fort Worth and I preached as hard as I could. And I tried to share it and pour into you what God has poured into me. But what I would hate to happen is that we spend Sunday and Sunday afternoon and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday in intimacy with God and God's word. And we completely miss what God is trying to do. Are y'all in here tonight? Talk back to me. Say amen when you can. Uh, because, because, because I know that there are times in life, if I look back 
over my life that there were times that God was speaking to my spirit and he was pouring into me, but I really didn't understand what he was doing in the moment. It, it took years and down the line for me to really understand what God was doing way back in 2095. Y'all in here tonight? And so, and so as we pass this way and as, as I'm going back to Texas, but you are still in the state of California and, and God is sending me here and we've had this dialogue together. I don't want you to miss what God is really trying to do. Uh, because, because, because there are 12 men that stood with him for three years and, and still there were moments that they didn't even know who he was. Y'all remember, y'all remember, uh, the Bible says they came to a coast of Caesarea Philippi. And Jesus asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I the son of man am? And they said, some say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're one of the prophets. But he said, who do y'all say I am? And the problem is they didn't even know who he was. And Jesus said, uh, and Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Peter said, you couldn't even got that on your own. You didn't understand who he was. And, and the Bible says there was a man who was sick. And, and the Bible says the sisters called for him. And he just stayed where he was two more days and refused to go to his brother's, his friend's house. And the Bible says he turned to his disciples and said, I'm glad for your sake I was not there to the intent that you might believe. How is it that we've been in the church 20, 30, 40, 50 years and still don't understand who he is. And so tonight, so tonight, I want us to get close and intimate with him. And there's a man uh, in John chapter 3 that comes to Jesus at night. Part of the Sanhedrin council. Comes to Jesus at nighttime. And I like this because, because really Nicodemus is like some of us. We've studied the word, we, we know what the Bible says, but there's a, a, a part of our Christianity, there's a part of our intimate relationship with God that we've missed. God Almighty. I, I need you to take your halos off tonight. This, this, this sermon ain't going to be for y'all who are already in heaven. This for us who trying to get there. Y'all in here tonight. Uh, I, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, y'all probably figured out I'm 31 years old, but I'm an old school preacher. I'm, I kind of got an old soul. Y'all in here tonight. Uh, and I'm going to go old school tonight. Uh, and old school preachers had a reader. Uh, y'all ain't saying nothing. And, and, and I remember uh, Brother Williams when I was a much younger preacher. They said I got a lot of energy now, but they didn't know me when I was 15. I was jumping on pews and stuff like that. Uh, but I remember my grandfather would get a read and he said, read! And it's almost like the thunder and lightning came down, you know. And so I want to I get a reader tonight because I want to share some things with you that are, I want to take this word by word tonight. Y'all got time for me tonight? Uh, I ain't going to do this without your permission. Y'all got time for me tonight? Did you come for a word tonight? All right, now watch this, watch this. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. Uh, John chapter 3, John chapter 3, John chapter 3, verse number 1. John chapter 3, verse number 1. Uh, Y'all get the brother a microphone so he can, so the church can hear him. Uh, John chapter 3, John chapter 3, verse number 1. I want to show you this. Watch what the Bible says. John chapter 3, verse number 1. What does the Bible say? Now there was a man of the Pharisees named who? Nicodemus. Somebody say Nicodemus. A and Nicodemus did what? A member of the Jewish ruling council. Uh -huh, read. He came to Jesus at night. And he came to Jesus at night. And said, Rabbi. And he said, Rabbi. We know you are a teacher who has come from I God. I know that you are a teacher come from God. How do you know Nicodemus? For no one could perform because the miraculous signs you are doing. Nobody could do the miracles you are doing that you are doing. If God were not with you. If God were now Nicodemus comes to Jesus at nighttime and says to Jesus, I know that you are a teacher come from. How do you know Nicodemus? Because I know that you are the teacher of God because I've seen the miracles that you're doing. Yeah, it does. Watch this. 
He does not really understand Jesus. All he understands are the miracles. And some of us really don't understand who he is absent of the miracles that he's performed. I know I'm talking to somebody tonight because I hear the testimonies. Mm. We get up and we, we really love the Lord when we got our income tax. Yeah. Come on, just be super uh, judgment day honest in here tonight. Uh, you know, when the Lord, we say, Lord, I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills. And then, Lord, my income tax came in. And ain't the Lord all right? Well, thank you, Jesus. Miracles. Mama had cancer and then went back and the cancer was gone. Miracles. Children were wayward. They came back home. Miracles. But the question is, do you know him when the miracles stop? So I know that you are a teacher come from God because nobody knows the miracles that you're doing except God be with him. You got to be of God because I saw a blind man get his sight. Y'all ain't talking back to me tonight. I know you're of God because I saw a deaf man get his hearing back. I, I know you're a, a, a man of God because there was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years and they stopped the flow of her blood. I know that you are a miracle worker. But the problem is is that when you only see him as a miracle worker you really miss who he is. Oh good God almighty. I'm going to get where y'all want me to be after a while. Watch this. Watch this. Keep reading. Keep reading. Jesus declared what? I tell you the truth. Nobody can see the kingdom of God. Watch this. Watch this. Jesus, wait, stop, stop right there. I want you to see this now. He says, King James Version, that's the one we're used to. Verily, verily. man is born again he cannot underline this in your Bible see the kingdom of God what is Jesus telling Nicodemus Nicodemus I love that word that term born again because it literally means born from above to the kingdom of God the purpose of the miracle was not just to give a deaf man his hearing it was not just to give a, a woman her, 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 her sight back the purpose of the miracle was to point you to a greater thing and that is I came to establish a kingdom but the problem is you won't see that unless you're born from above. Unless you're born from above, all you will be able to see are miracles and you'll miss the kingdom. Are y'all following me? So what he's saying to him is that if you only see me as a miracle worker, you've missed it. Because I came to establish a kingdom. This is about the kingdom. This is, y'all somebody say the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. Watch what he says. He says, but unless you're born from above, again, from above, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. Now y'all say amen because it's about to get ugly right here. Watch this. Watch this. Keep reading. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus said, now Jesus, listen, I've been in the church all my life. And I ain't never heard this stuff about born from above. And he says, how can, this, how can this thing be? How can a man be born? Oh, don't miss this, Figueroa. How can a man be born when he's, he's already old? Already old. Oh, don't miss your chance here. He's saying, I'm too old. Mm. To try to be born again. I'm too set in my ways. Die. Oh boy, stay there, die. To be born 
no, 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 you don't understand, uh, Jesus. Jesus, we, we've been doing this for a long time, and now here you come talking about being born. No, 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 Jesus, Jesus, we're too old. We, we've been at this too long. I, I, I can't move as fast as I used to. I ain't no young whippersnapper. I, y'all ain't helping me tonight. How can a man, how can a church be born again when a church is old? How die? Oh, you're helping me now. When I got to Stop Six Church of Christ, the median age of that church was 75. I remember when I first got there, my baby, my oldest boy, my wife was pregnant with him. And uh, my wife and I were the youngest people at the church. When I got there, there was about 80 people. We doubled in size in less than a year. And... I remember people would come in and their babies would be crying in church. And you know some, you, you know how y'all are. <laughs> Stay a while, doc. Start looking around. Will she take that baby to the cry room? Y'all know y'all cousins. And I got up in front of the church, brother, and I told them one Sunday morning, I said, do you know with the prettiest and the most beautiful sound in a church is? And they saw somebody the singing. I said, no. It's a baby. Because that means the church is going to live past us. Let me tell you something, Figueroa. If you ain't got no babies crying in your church, your church is dead. So the question Nicodemus has is, Jesus, I know you came to establish a kingdom, but how can a man be born when he's already old? How can stop six grow mm. when he's old? Help us, boy. Jesus says, I'll mm. tell you how. Mm. Y'all getting quiet? Doc. Am I in the house tonight? In here. I'm going back to Texas, so... Y'all don't want to say I can come back now. <laughs> Watch what he says. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Yeah. See, that's, that's us. Work it down. Because we become literalists. And he took the cup. So that means we can only have literalists. Born again. That must mean you got to go in. Jesus says, man, you missed it. If everything that you take in the Bible, you don't see the spirit behind it, and all you see is the system, you've missed it. Okay, I'm going to get where you want me to be. He says, can he enter a second time to his mother's womb and be born? Watch what he says. Jesus answers him and says, what is he I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom Nobody, of God. Nobody, watch this, watch this, watch this. Nobody can enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless he is born. Unless he is born of, water of two things. And the spirit. Water. Oh, and y'all the church of Christ are going to be shouting by now. And the spirit. Now, that's our scripture right there, ain't it? Our scripture. Now, unless a man is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Watch this. Teach that. Can I, can I just mess your mind up? Please. He says, the first thing, unless you're born from above, you won't be able to see. But he says, unless you're born of water and spirit, you won't be able to because there's going to be some people who can see it, but won't be able to. Okay, okay, now watch this, watch this, watch this. Let me, let me shatter your theology just for a second. I'm going to build it back up, but I'm going to shatter it for a minute. This passage is not about baptism. Are y'all in here? Because, let me help you, Nicodemus has no problem with baptism. The Jews baptized more than we baptized. They baptized in the morning, got baptized in the evening. They were baptized before they ate. Y'all ain't in here. They baptized before they went in the temple. 
They have no problem. As a matter of fact, John the Baptist is out there in the wilderness preaching baptism. He's saying, come, repent and be baptized. They have no problem with baptism. The thing that is crazy about this passage is not the water. The thing that is radical about this passage is the spirit. They had never, ever, 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 ever thought about the spirit of God. They had no problem with water. They didn't preach spirit. I'll let that sink in for a while. He says, and, and I just want you to hear what we've traditionally done to this passage. We've gone to the passage to preach water when Jesus spoke the passage to preach spirit. Uh, y'all, 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 don't get ugly with me. I'm going to get where you want me to be after a while. I know I'm right about it because everything he's going to say hereafter, he's going to talk to Nicodemus about not water, spirit. And what I want to talk to Figueroa about tonight is not water. I want to talk to y'all about the spirit of God because I want you to understand that you can have water and completely miss and do not understand and do not embrace the spirit of God. And I just want, I'm not talking about y'all, I'm talking about your cousins. (laughs) There are some folk that we have baptized into the church and they believe, they heard, they believe, they repented, they confessed, they were baptized and that's where it stopped. That's where it stopped. And we completely missed the passage where it said, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and your children. Oh, who are for that's us. So Jesus says, unless a man is born of water and the spirit. And the spirit. So Nicodemus, watch what he says. He never, ever argues with Jesus about water. Never. He doesn't say, I don't want to stand baptism. He never, never said. He starts talking to Jesus about this, this radical, life-changing thing called spirit. Spirit. That's good. <laughs> oh, this is going to get good to me. I like preaching. Y'all, can y'all tell? I see it, Doc. Yeah. Watch this, watch this. Flesh gives birth to flesh. Watch this, Jesus is going to try to explain it to him. the spirit gives birth Flesh spirit. gives birth to flesh. And spirit gives birth to that spirit. I sound, don't that sound easy? Don't that sound elementary? What he's trying to tell him is that you can't help but to understand fleshly things when you're born in the flesh. And the reason you're not God. spiritual Woo. or you don't understand spiritual things is because you got water, but you don't understand the spirit. God Almighty in here tonight. I am so tired of preaching at churches that are full of water folk. No Holy Ghost folk, that. But we left the spirit right where we got the water. God. He says, you want to understand why your church, your marriage, your children aren't spiritual? It's because they might have gotten wet, but they didn't get no spirit. Mm. Oh, I'm going to show it to you. Watch this. Keep reading. You should not be surprised at my saying. Mm -hmm. You must be born again. Yeah, don't be surprised. The wind blows wherever it pleases. Oh, yeah. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it is coming from or where it is going. Yeah. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Now, 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 Jesus says, let me give you a litmus test Look at you. of how you can tell if you're, if you are spiritual or if your church. I'm not telling y'all something I wouldn't tell my own church. Let me tell you how you can tell. See, it's easy to say you're the church of Christ. It's another thing to be. Let me tell you, there's a lot of people who got the name on the sign and Jesus don't even know that he's welcome there. Okay, okay. (laughs) How do you know? Jesus says, okay, let me show it to you this way. The wind blows wherever it wants to. And, And you can hear the sound thereof 
but you can't tell whether it's going or coming. That's just how it is with everybody that's born in the Spirit. What he's trying to share with him is that when you are born of the Spirit, the Spirit's effect is seen. And the Spirit's effect is not heard or it's not told. It's not something you talk about. It's something that is obvious in the effect you have on the stuff around you. The wind, how do you know the wind is blowing? I look at the tree, and if the tree's leaves are shaking, then I know that the wind is, the wind ain't got to have no public service announcement. The wind ain't got to have no sign. The wind ain't got to have no television or radio program. And the way I know that the wind is in town, all I got to do is look at the tree. How do you know if you're the real church of Christ, you look at the tree around you? Look at your community. Are things changing in your community? Yeah. Are people's lives being affected because you're in town? Because let me tell you something. If you're a church that all you're interested in is having church. Boy, boy, boy. Mm. I done. Jesus, I know I'm right about it. Jesus says, how are you going to tell if a tree is being effective? He said, I'm going to look at the fruit. How am I going to tell if a church has the spirit? I'm going to look at the leaves. What, okay, okay, can I go deeper? Somebody say go deeper. Go deeper, Doc. Uh, uh, whenever a church has the spirit of God, Jesus says it's like the wind. And there ought to be some, you said it, my sister, movement. Somebody say movement. Move. Nothing that has the spirit of God is still. Yeah. Boy. I'm going to turn my back because some of y'all looking at me funny. I said nothing. Just read your Bible. Nothing that imbibes the Spirit of God is still. Okay, watch this. God tells Moses, he's at the Red Sea. He says to him, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Watch the Spirit of God move. He said, all you got to do is stretch forth your rod. And when the Spirit of God moves, watch what's going to happen. He said he stretched forth this rod, and as soon as he stretched it, water had to do what? Move. Anything that has the Spirit of God has movement. If your church has no movement, your church is dead. Boy. Are y'all quiet in here tonight? If your community has no movement, your community is not. I am so tired. I've been preaching meetings since I was eight years old. And I would remember, I remember I would go and I would, yeah, you know, this is before GPS and cell phones came out. And this is when you had to go into a community and ask somebody on the corner where the church was. And I would go and I'd say, hey, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I would, I'm going to the so-and-so church of Christ. Uh, my brother, do you know where that is? And they said, no, I ain't never heard of that church. Yeah. But, but when I get there, they tell me, we the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill. But then the dude right down the street don't even know you exist. So, so, so something's missing. We say we're one thing. But there's no movement around us. So God is saying, well then, are you a church or are you the church of Christ? Because anything that is of me has movement. Okay, okay, y'all getting it, y'all getting it. Okay, okay, can I go deeper? Please. I'm, I, 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 I gotta go deeper, watch this, keep reading. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Uh -huh. Huh. How can this be, Nicodemus asked? You are Israel's teacher? Said Jesus. You a Sunday school teacher? And you do not understand these you things? You an elder in the church? Die. You a deacon? You been in the church 30 years? 40 years? 50 years? And you don't understand spirit? That's what he's saying. It, it, I'm not making this up. It's in the Bible. He says, how you don't understand? You are a teacher of Israel. You are a preacher. You are an elder. You are and you don't understand simple stuff. 
because you've missed it. You've missed it. You've been in revival, but you've missed it. You've been in prayer and meditation, but you've missed it because all you saw was a miracle. You saw, oh, we had two baptisms, and you got excited, and God also preached, and you got excited, but you missed it. Keep reading. I tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people See. do not accept our testimony. Oh, you don't get it. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? He says, now, if I told you stuff that's of flesh and you don't get it, that, how do I expect you to understand heavenly things? And he's going to keep saying, and nobody has ascended in heaven but he who has come down. In other words, I'm the only one who has the expertise in this. I ain't got time because y'all going to say I'm being messy. But he says, I'm the only one that's the expert in spiritual things. Are y'all following me? But you don't receive my witness because you think your traditions and your rituals are the thing that makes you spiritual. So what you've done is you've taken the rituals and you've taken Jesus out of your church. Okay, okay, okay. Keep moving. Come on, come on, come on, come on. My Lord, no one has ever gone into heaven mm -hmm. except the one who came from heaven, uh -huh, uh -huh, the uh -huh, Son of uh -huh, Man, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. just as Moses. Okay, that's where I want to be. That's my text. I, that was all my introduction. Now, can I preach now? Preach a bit. <laughs> Watch, I'm almost done. He says, now, just as Moses... Lifted up the snake, the snake in the desert, in the desert, so the Son of Man, so much the Son of Man, be lifted up, be lifted up, read and everyone who believes in him. That everyone, I'm about to get happy in here, preached out. Everyone that believes in him may have eternal life, may have. Eternal life. Keep reading. For God so That's loved the my world. That's it right there. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and that only He gave son. His one and only Son. That whoever believes that in whoever Him, whoever believes in Him, perish but have shall not life. perish but have everlasting life. Now I won't tell you this. I like this because we all shout, or well, some of us shout, at John three sixteen. Die. That's the one we put on our car, yes, you know, the bumper sticker. And that's one Big Mama had over the refrigerator, you know. Uh, 16, for God so loved the world that gave his own. Don't, don't we like that? How many of y'all, that's your favorite scripture? How many of you, that's your favorite? God bless you, God bless you. But I want to tell you this, church. You really cannot embrace or really even understand 16 until you understand 14. Because 14 it's going to tell you what he means in 16. Now, let me tell you what he's doing. It sounds like it comes out of nowhere as Moses. It just sounds like it's kind of, Jesus is kind of being schizophrenic here. It's like, mm. what are you talking about? But Jesus is a genius. He's talking to Nicodemus, and John tells us in John 3, 1, that Nicodemus is a what? Pharisee. Pharisee. Yes, a Pharisee is an expert in the law. So, one thing Nicodemus studies day in and day out, morning, noon, and night, is the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch are the first five books of the, of the Old Testament, are the law books. So if Moses, if I mean, rather, if, if Nicodemus doesn't know anything else, even if he doesn't know anything about the Spirit of God, one thing he does know, and that's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, y'all ain't in here tonight. Are y'all following me? So what Jesus does, because he doesn't understand the wind illustration. He doesn't understand born of, of, of being of above. He doesn't understand water in spirit. He doesn't understand my witness. So what he does, he reaches down into uh, Nicodemus's frame of reference. He, he goes down into his arsenal of knowledge and pulls out a passage. And he shows him with this one passage who he really is. So in order for you to understand John 3, 16, you got to go to Numbers 21 to understand. What, can I bring you there just for a little? Can I bring you there for a minute? Uh, okay, I need your permission. Can, can I go there for a minute? Yeah, yeah. 
Numbers 21, read quickly, quickly, quickly. These folk ready for me to get out of, out of California. Uh, 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 Numbers 21, verse number 4. I want everybody there. Numbers 21, verse number 4. I want to show you this. I'm going to let you go. They traveled from Mount Hor along the, the route says, to the Red Sea. they traveled. Now, this is the children of Israel. Are you following me? To go if you follow me, say amen when you can. The Bible said, and they traveled. From Mount Hor, from Mount Hor along, out to the Red Sea. Up to the Red Sea. To go around Edom. To go around Edom. Read. But the people grew impatient but the on the way. Wait, 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 wait. That's a speed bump right there. The Bible says, but the people grew, grew impatient on the way. Patient. Oh, I wish I had time. They grew impatient. Why? Because of the what? Of the way. The way. Keep reading. They spoke against God. And they spoke, oh good God of mine. And against Moses. They spoke against God. And against but Moses. But they also spoke against the preacher. Yeah. Why have Wait, you hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Talk now. God is about to do something. The sin of the people was not that they just spoke against God. The sin was that they also ran their juicy mouths about the preacher. And instead of inviting him over for lunch, they had the preacher for lunch. Are y'all in here tonight? Now watch this, read. Why have you brought us Why? out of Egypt? Brother Hawkins, did you bring us up out of Egypt? We were fine where we were. Mm. Why did you have to come with this liberal vision of coming up out of slavery, out of Egypt, and going to have us to die in the desert? Yes, sir. Mm. And the only reason that they're saying that is because they were impatient. Keep on, watch this. Stay on the line. Read. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die uh -huh. in the desert? Uh -huh. There is no bread. I want to say, slow down now. Watch this. Watch what they say. There is no bread. No bread. There is no water. There is no water. And we detest this miserable food. Wait, 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 wait. I got a question. <laughs> Preacher, I got a question. Talk that. The King James says, and our souls loatheth this light bread. <laughs> so my question is, in one instance they say there's no bread. Mm. And then they turn around and say, we don't like the light bread. Die. So my question is, either there's no bread, or you just don't like the bread. Don't like the bread Are y'all in here tonight? Die. Because, and this is what I tell preachers and leaders all the time. You got to be careful listening to everybody. Yes, because sir. some people, it ain't that they don't have no bread. They just don't like what you're serving. Yes, mm. Talk okay, down. okay, okay. I got to go back to Texas. So Y'all might as well come on board with me. Watch this. Read. Bible says, and our souls, the Lord. Uh, we then don't the, like this prayer. Read. Then the Lord sent sent venomous snakes. Venomous oh, snakes. They bit the people. And they... Bit the people. And many Israelites died. And many Israelites died. Ta Lord have mercy. That's a the bad people. thing. When folk start dying. Okay. Die. Okay. Keep reading. Keep reading. The people came to Moses. And, and the said, people came to Moses. We sinned. We have. Yeah, it ain't like a good funeral. When we spoke against you. To make the Lord folk realize. And against you. That we have done an ill thing mm. against God and against you. Read. Prayed that the Lord. Now the same man they were talking about. They said, "Can you go pray for us?" Prayed that the Lord. Pookie in jail. Can you go pray for him? Ray Ray, Ray Ray, they lost his job. Can you go? Boom Quisha and 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 Buck Joe is having problems. Can you go? But watch, 
Watch what a man of integrity and a leader of integrity does. When people talk about him, Tom when down. people disuse him and abuse him, when people do all kind of manner of evil against you, I don't care what they do to you. Freak this boy. is what a man of God would do. Watch. So Moses. So Moses. Pray for the people. Buck, you helping me. You never, never, never stop. To the level of a person that is misusing you. I don't care what a person does to me. I stand tall. And when it's time for me to pray. Somebody ought to know enough about the Lord to pray. Bible says and he prayed for the people. Watch this. I'm going to get where you want me to be. The Lord said to Moses. Lord said to Moses. Make a snake what I need you and to put do. it on a pole. I need you to make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is... Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. Keep reading. So Moses made a bronze snake mm. and put it on a pole. Made a bronze snake. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and uh -huh. looked at the bronze snake, he lived. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Snakes are biting the people. So God says to Moses, look if you it. want the people to live, I want you to make the same thing but out of a different material. Same thing, different material. Somebody say same thing, different material. Come on, one more time. Same thing, different material. So I want you to make a snake, but I want you to make the snake out of bronze. And I want you to shape it where it looks like a snake. I want you to set it on a pole. And whenever somebody looks at the pole, the same thing that bit them will heal them and it will live y'all ain't seeing this so now what I want you to see is that what Moses now has to do he has to go to the coppersmith and says mr. coppersmith I need some bronze but bronze doesn't come in the shape of snakes are y'all following what I'm saying so now what Moses has to do is to go and get some bronze but now he has to bring that bronze back to his shop and he has to melt that bronze down somebody said melt it down he melts it down and he allows it to become hard enough where it becomes malleable. Somebody say malleable. Malleable is a big word that simply means it is movable and bendable. It's shapeable. It's able to move and become what it was not first, but it can become and make it look like something else. Are y'all following me? So now the bronze is malleable and now it's in a shape that it is in a predicament. It is in a place that it can become the salvation utensil that will save everybody that's dying are y'all in here tonight I'm almost done now watch this watch this now what Moses has to do when he gets this bronze to a place of malleability he has to beat this bronze and he has to beat it and the question is why are you beating on it because I'm shaping it because when I finish beating on it, it's going to look like a venomous snake. But I'm doing it for a reason. Because when I finish beating on it, it's going to look like the same thing that bit the people. But it's going to be out of a different material. Not only that, when he finished beating on it, it now looks like God wants it to look. And so God says, now I want you to put it on a pole. And when you put it on a pole, I want you to lift it. I want you to lift it up. Now, 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 now. There are two million Israelites in the wilderness. And people are dying everywhere. Now, I probably would have been crazy enough to ask God a question. Now, God, wouldn't it be better if we had more than one pole? Come on in here, Church of Christ. Wouldn't it be better if we had a pole in the north and a pole in the and a pole in the east and a pole? And God says, No, 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 no. I want there only to be one pole. 
because whenever you dying, everybody got to look at the same pole if they want to live. Are y'all in here? So God only gives Moses one pole. Are y'all in here? Now the task of Moses is now cumbersome because now that there's only one pole, he got to make sure that he got to lift it high enough that two million people can look at the same pole and get salvation. You see, when you are tasked with saying you are the only church that you can read about in the Bible, then you are tasked with a cumbersome task because now you got to make sure that you lift Jesus high enough that not only can Los Angeles see him, but Fort Worth can see him, and Africa can see him, and Australia can see him. Are y'all in here tonight? Now Jesus said, watch this, just as Moses was lifted in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So now Jesus is equating himself to the brown serpent where he says what I am, if you want to know Nicodemus, I'm just the same thing that bit the people. See, the thing that bit you and made you sinful was your flesh. I hear Paul saying, I, I tried to do good, but evil was, I can't preach a little in here, was always present with me. He said, I wanted to do right, but wrong always was on my shoulder. And so because I'm in the flesh, I have a sin problem. Do I have anybody in here that said every now and then I, I got a sin problem? I want to go back to Texas like this, y'all. I said, I, I know I got a sin problem. And so when God saw that I was dying because sin had bitten me, y'all ain't in here tonight. Jesus said, I'm the same thing, but a different material. What I got to do is I got to put on a sinful flesh. I got to look like y'all, but I ain't really y'all. I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. Y'all ain't following what I'm saying. And so now he's got to become the salvation utensil that is going to save all the world. And so I see him going in Pilate's court and they beat him all night long. The Bible said they gave him 49 stripes, save one. Are y'all in here tonight? The Bible said they beat him from all night long until the morning time. Why are you beating on him? Because I got to make him into the salvation utensil uh, why you be known him uh, cause I'm making him uh, into the same thing uh, that bit y'all uh, y'all ain't saying nothing uh, but not only that uh, after they beat him all night long uh, the bible said they laid a cross on his back uh, and now he gotta walk up the Via de la Rosa uh, y'all ain't saying nothing uh, he's walking up Toward Calvary's hill, uh, and the Bible said they placed him uh, between. I'm going home now, y'all. Uh, between two thieves, uh, am I right about it? Uh, put nails uh, in his hands, uh, same hands uh, that opened up a blind man's eyes, uh, same hands uh, that unstopped a deaf man's ears. Uh, so y'all ain't saying nothing. Same hands uh, that fed the multitude uh, with two little fish and five loaves of bread. Uh, put nails in his feet, same feet that walked up Capernaum's highway, same feet that walked on water and didn't even get wet. Yeah! I'm talking about his feet and the Bible says they placed him on a cross but not only that, they put him high and lifted up and I hear him saying if I be lifted up I'll draw all oh, men, do I have a witness in here? All oh, men, unmere. Y'all ain't 
ain't saying nothing. Uh, and now I got to watch him die. And I got to watch him hang his head uh, in the locks of his shoulders. Uh, but I hear him saying, uh, destroy this temple. Uh, and in three days, uh, I'll raise it up again. Uh, he died on Friday. Am I right about it? Uh, the devil thought he had him. Uh, same uh, to the grave Saturday morning. Uh, he was still there. Came back to the grave uh, Saturday afternoon. Uh, still there. Came back Saturday night. Uh, still there. But somebody told me that it was early. I said it was early. Sunday morning. Uh, Dew drops were still on the roses uh, early Sunday morning uh, before the morning birds sung a song. Uh, early Sunday morning uh, before the sun dripped his rays uh, over the blanket clouds of the sky. Uh, Jesus got up uh, with all power in the palm of his hand. Uh, I will. I had a witness in here tonight uh, that said he rose uh, with all power. And now Jesus said, if you really want to know why I came, it wasn't just to make water in the wine. If you really want to know why I came, Figueroa, he said, now your job is a cumbersome job. Because now what you got to do is lift him. Lift him up higher. The question is, what we going to do with all this spirit? i tell you what you do. You just start lifting him up higher. What we gonna do when all these folks start flooding this church? We gonna lift them up higher. What we gonna do when the wine all comes? We gonna lift them up. What we gonna do when the folk come that marriages is on the rocks? We gonna lift them up. 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 Ah, we gonna lift them up. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Here's my favorite word in the Bible, that who that means I ain't got to be in the city to know him. I don't have to be rich to know him. I can be from Africa. I can be from Asia. I can be from right here in Los Angeles. I can be broke, busted, and disgusted. I can be married. I can be divorced. I can have a child. I cannot have a child. I can, have a, uh, I, can, I can have money and I can be broke because he says who so ever I came all the way from Texas to tell somebody who thinks that they have to be perfect to be a part of our church I came to tell somebody who thought that they had to have it all together I hear people saying the number one excuse for not coming to church is I don't have the right clothes. The number one excuse for not being saved is I don't have my life together yet. And I tell you all the time, if you could get it together, then you don't need Jesus. My days are over preaching the church and not telling folk about Jesus. Jesus says, I'm tired of y'all lifting up the church without lifting me. He says, whosoever lifts me. I came to lift up because let me tell you something, when, when you lift me up, when I mess up, you fall out and you leave and you say, I knew that church wasn't no good. But, but the problem is I stopped lifting myself and I stopped lifting y'all up and I started telling folks, whosoever believes in I know, I know you, I know I'm the preacher and I know, I know you love me and I know I'm God's servant but, but you can't believe in me because every now and then I may fall along the way, I may falter, I may stumble and so you can't believe in me. So I want to tell you whosoever believes in the one who's perfect all the time shall not perish but have life everlasting. Figueroa 
as I bid you farewell, my challenge to you tonight is no matter what comes, no matter what goes, lift up Jesus. Keep him high. Keep him lifted up. Because he says, if you want to fill this church, you want to fill that balcony, he said, I double dog dare you to lift me up. And I will draw. All men, not just black men, I'll draw. Unto me. Stand to your feet tonight. Turn to your neighbor and say, lift him up. Come on, look at him like they owe you money and say, lift him up. Did that bless anybody tonight? Can I, can I be real tonight? I was going to do it anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm too old now to be fake. This church is a legendary church. This church has a rich and a vibrant history. But let me just be judgment day honest with you tonight. You can only ride that wave for so long. And the only way that you will remain legendary is not on what you have done. Am I in the house tonight? But Jesus is asking not what did R.N. Hogan do? He's going to say what did Vincent Hawkins do? What did, what did you do under your watch? Did you, because I could not stand before God and say that under our generation, we allow such an historic, legendary people of God die under our watch. I'm in no way saying that you are dying. I am saying that we can this is this is this is a universal issue with universal churches. I told my church the same thing. Stop six is a legendary church. SCW Gibbs, great preacher. But I told them he brought you through and over the Red Sea. And I will never disrobe him. For being an emancipator who brought us over the Red Sea. But I can't bring you over the Red Sea. Because now we're at Jordan. And the question is, do you have enough faith in Joshua to cross Jordan? And the only way you will become what God has ordained you to be, destined you to be, placed the potential in your heart to become, is you got to start lifting him, not just up, but higher. If you got to get on your tippy toes, lift him. Yes. Somebody say, I want to lift him. I want to be the church that lifts him higher. Now, I double dog that three of you to give him praise like you've never done before. Give him praise right now because we're going to lift him higher. If you need prayer tonight, I, I, I just want to do this tonight. I, I want to do this tonight before I go. I want all of the elders, all of the deacons, to come.
to come forward. All of the elders, all the deacons to come. To come forward. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to pray for these men first because because Bible says when they crossed Jordan, the Ark of the Covenant went first. That's the presence of God. Then second was the foot of Joshua. We got to pray for our Joshua because we're going somewhere. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for where you have brought us from. But right now, dear God, we're declaring and decreeing, we're promising you with all our hearts with all our souls and with all our minds, that we're going to lift you higher. And right now, Doc, we, God, we ask you to give these men who have come the courage, the tenacity, and the veracity to never, never grow weary in well-doing because we understand we will reap if we faint not. Father, help us to be ever so bold to lift your son as high as we can lift him high in every venue every village every hamlet every place that a person dwells father we ask that we lift him that whosoever believes in him can have life everlasting bless us and keep us rock us and cradle us we'll be careful to give you the glory the honor and the praise in jesus name amen if you need prayer tonight, will you come? Will you join these men and say, I am going to lift him high. I lift him in my marriage. I'm going to lift him at my job. I'm going to lift him on the street corner. I'm going to lift him. Do I have one who will come and say, 